Hey folks, so this is the third installment on my series of psychology for trading. And here we are with Krija Kelly. Uh, is that right? Krija. Krija. <laughs> so, Aram, I always do that whenever I, yeah, sorry about that. Krija Kelly. Uh, so, you know, Krija and myself have been working together for long enough for me to pronounce her name properly. But um, uh, for a number of years now, and um, I've had you know some some really good sessions, and um, I just wanted to get Craig involved in this series um, to kind of talk about how the people that she works with, a lot of the time, high performance sports people and executives, and and some of the practical elements. Um, that she brings uh, to those people and to their, their to, the, to the things that they want to work on, and I thought that might work really well for for rounding off this series. So um, you know, we have a couple of questions um, I wanted to kind of get through, but really it's just a framework for a discussion uh, around performance thinking, and for I suppose for traders, it's it's sort of how do we get from you know when we start learning how to trade, it's very hard to adjust to that sort of risk mindset and I wanted to really yeah, open it up to Craig and, and uh, see what you think uh, about some of those challenges and, and what you've really seen um, in the past. Yeah sure so I might just give a little bit of a background on how I've actually ended up in the trading sphere because it might seem a bit strange coming from sports psychology so um, I'm a high performance psychologist but the bulk of my career was working with elite athletes so professional athletes in optimizing performance um, and so I would have studied sports psychology and qualified in that but actually the principles of you know, high performance and the principles of sports psychology are the exact same. It's all about humans operating in high pressure environments and, you know, succeeding. So what I found was, I've been coaching since 2008, so what I found was along the line, um, people, so Tim actually found me in this way, so I was working as a sports psychologist, but I got a lot of people from different high performance domains contacting me. Um, and so I worked with everyone from opera singers to pilots to doctors to, you know, anyone that's kind of working in a high pressure environment. And uh, so then, you know, we started working with Tim and the trading side of things really um, took off because there's such a similarity between the mindset that's required in elite sports, professional sports, and the mindset that's required in trading. And actually, there's a lot of similarities between the two arenas as well, you know, the high risk, the split second decision making, all of that. So I've been working now for the past um, around two years with traders uh, to really dig into that mindset. And I suppose, the approach that I take so just to maybe explain how where Tim's coming from on the psychology side of things and where I'm coming from complement each other uh, I don't have a background in trading itself so I don't trade um, in the market but my expertise is in psychology so what I bring to the mix is an understanding of the depth of the psychology that drives humans and the things that can mess us up and then how that plays out in the markets. So my approach to high performance is to go really deep into the psychology of the person and then link that with the actions you're taking in the market and how that, uh, how you can actually kind of use practical strategies to, to change what you're doing in the market to optimize your performance. But it means going in depth into the person. Um, and so what I found really the biggest wins that I've had with traders have been sometimes from unlocking things at a very deep level, like core limiting beliefs, that are playing out then in you know the typical actions that you see in the market like revenge trading ego trades fear missing out all of that but it's actually coming from a deeper place inside the person so that's really where i found that the you know the biggest wins come from yeah that's really interesting because you know core limiting beliefs and and i always find that i'm coming back you know with traders i'm coming back to their core core confidence in their ability to do their job. And so with my uh, small group of elite traders, every week on a Friday, the first question in review is, rate yourself one to 10 on how comfortable and confident you felt in your ability to do your job as a trader. And I just, cause I just wanna get a, a pure quick lit gauge on how they feel. And, you know, something I talked about um, in one of the master classes we did is, um, you know, it's, it's like, I can, I can so easily, I felt this myself in, in, in sport and in trading in that you, you, once you start sitting there and any thought creeps in that you're, you're sitting there 
at a deficit for knowledge or a technical skill, then it just starts this, this downward spiral of, you know, just giving in to the losses or just, uh, just clicking buttons and, and it just all spirals down into like fear of missing out of trades, um, you know, chasing trades. It's kind of similar and um, just, just totally ignorant of the part of you that knows you shouldn't be doing these things. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, really something that I'd love to talk more to you about is like, how do you help people to kind of transition on? I remember there's one trader that I was working with, with that went on to work with you, um, who I, I had a session with him and he was like, every time trades go on side, like really on side, the more they go on side and into profit, the more he just cannot wait to get out of it because it's so it was so painful to him and i was just like well are you do you really talk yourself down quite a lot and he's like absolutely my wife would totally agree with that statement so like could you talk a bit about how you work with that and sure there's, a, there's actually so many pieces to that my brain is going mad because there's loads of different things i want to pick up on there but just to come back to the idea of confidence in yourself like that's fundamental and literally I would say across every client I've had through every performance domain, confidence is the main thing or one of the main things that they want to work on. So even professional athletes at the top of the profession, top of their game, you know, um, they're still trying to build confidence. So it's not always about fixing things that are going wrong. Sometimes it's about even optimizing strengths as well. But that confidence piece is so important because um, in these arenas, so trading and sports, pressure is very high and that's just the nature of the job. But having strong confidence can kind of buffer the against the impact of that um, pressure. So it actually stops, we can talk about that maybe down the line around how pressure impacts our thinking, but having high confidence kind of protects against that. So it's a way that you can, if you can build your confidence, you can deal with more pressure. Um, and so, but that's a really interesting point about, you know, that uh, trader that you're speaking of that kind of when they were winning, they were, um, you know, it felt uncomfortable. And this is something that I've seen a lot actually as well. And it's really counterintuitive, like people kind of get surprised when you talk about this, but a lot of people can have a fear of success. So it's deep rooted and it's not something you would see on the surface. Um, but it's, it can be something that's inbuilt in us from, I don't know, childhood, from our parents, from lots of different experiences. But we can actually limit ourselves from succeeding for a myriad of different reasons. And it takes self-awareness to understand why we're doing that and then to shift it. Um, but it is something that's come up time and again. And sometimes it's useful to actually question, like, what would it mean if I was to succeed? And you might be surprised by the answer, you know, maybe you might have to let go of certain relationships or maybe you might have to change your self-identity or other people would be jealous and you're trying to you know protect against that discomfort things like that so there's a whole load of kind of really deep psychology reasons why people can actually hold themselves back from succeeding so that that's one piece of it obviously then the rest of it you know it's it's hard enough to have good practices in the market and to stick to your plan and all of that this is something that people should watch out for if you find that you're consistently not kind of hitting your targets even though you know you have the capacity to do so maybe question are you holding yourself back and just one other piece to pick up on there I love what you're saying about you know every Friday rating how confident were you so that's a really good example of taking a psychological concept but bringing it into you know your practical day-to-day -day trading so actually getting it down in numbers and being able to track week by week, how is my confidence? That's really the basis of the work that I do with people is developing that self-awareness through tracking, through metrics, you know, objective data, um, so that you can start to see patterns. And so once you kind of have the data there, then you can start looking at why that might be. So for example, if you have a run of really low confidence three weeks in a row, it could be something that's going on in some other area of your life, like in your personal life, that's impacting your confidence and it's playing out in the market. So in high performance, you can't separate the person from the performer. You know, both sides of things are always in play. Yeah. So uh, so there's a couple of great questions, uh, or sorry, what well, great things you said that have just like gotten questions going in my mind. Is that like, one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, I mean, maybe maybe quite a few traders watching this, you know, are thinking, well, I wish I had the problem. That was just confidence, you know, whereas I'm just bleeding money day on day, day on day. 
you know, how do I take myself out of this spiral and, and make a change? And I know when you and I started working, I, I was in a pretty bad personal space and I, I knew it was impacting my trading. And I suppose, how do you kind of create that awareness? Because I, I, for me, I was just like, no, everything's fine. I mean, yeah, I've had a bad, bad uh, breakup here, but no, I, I'm, I'm dealing with everything's fine. But really, to kind of objectify that or to take yourself out from that, what sort of things do you can can a person do to kind of take themselves out and be a bit more aware, maybe? So I think, um, like we were talking about, it's really, it's about building self-awareness, but doing it in a practical way. So the first step that I take with any, when I'm doing one-to-one -one coaching with anyone, whether it's a trader or an athlete from any performance domain, we do a thing called a performance profile. So it sounds fancy, but it's a pretty simple exercise where you actually break down performance like a jigsaw. So you look you under different headings. So physical factors, mental factors, technical skill, uh, tactical and lifestyle you think of all of the different things that impact your trading. So even, you know, so not just the things you're good at or you're bad at, but literally everything that has an impact on your trading performance. So that if you were 10 out of 10 on all of these different things, you know, it would result in peak performance. And that's usually an eye-opening exercise for people because you start thinking outside the box and you start getting into this performance lifestyle approach that I talk about. So this would be something that athletes really, you know, um, use and ascribe to. So your sleep can impact your your trading and maybe that's not an area that people who are thinking you know i really want to improve my trading they're not first thinking actually i better get a better night's sleep however that's fundamental so in any performance domain like we all know if you don't get good sleep you know you're not going to be functioning optimally in a cognitive way so this exercise maps everything out and then it gives you a good sense of like a snapshot in time of where you're at on every factor and usually you'll find that there's one core thing in the middle that if you improve that first, you know, five other things would improve. So you can actually approach this in a very systematic and practical way. I remember when we did my performance profile and I just thought, oh, this is just like, I don't, I don't really know where this is going. And then when I filled it out and I was like, oh, okay, there's some stuff here. Maybe you could look at it the right way. And then we got in a session and I was like, Oh God, this this is like just pick me apart. And it was I was amazed at actually how much self-clarity it gave me. And then from that, I could develop like a whole different level of confidence because, because I was just so much more self-aware. And I just thought that was amazing. And that was really a turn point for me in working with you. Um so well, thank you for that. But yeah, I highly recommend that um, for people to do. Another question I have is like, you know, in relation to, because I, I know like most traders that I talk to are just, they're, they're, they're kind of young or they're starting or they're like, you know, six months in, maybe two years in that have these real sort of, especially with the traders who are like two years in, three years in, it's always, they, they have such an awareness of that it's just their psychology, that they know all the technical stuff they have good edge, but it's just these you know, self-limiting beliefs or didn't, didn't, don't have good sleep, things like that that, that that get them. But coming back to like, you know, maybe most of the traders that might be watching this who are kind of suffering in PL um, performance. Um, I mean, for example, like how 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 does the mindset of like say Johnny Sexton, uh, rugby player for Ireland? Uh, how does how does he develop his mindset to kind of like what gets him to being Johnny Sexton in terms of how does he think? I mean, yeah, he's got natural talent, obviously, but then also when he's there in front of, in a stadium, being all around the world about to take a kick, how does he not choke? And what you know, how does he keep his mind under control? So it is literally practice, discipline, systematic approach to developing that mindset. And I think that's something that maybe people miss when they think of performance psychology. For some people, it seems a bit, oh, and especially even as I'm talking about going deep into your core limiting beliefs, probably half the people have gone, oh, that's not for me. But it's, it, there, you can actually do this. And the best way to do it, to develop the mindset that you need for peak performance is to treat it the same way that you build your technical skills and your tactical skills in trading. Like you learn techniques, you implement them, you consolidate them, become second nature, and then you move to a higher level of 
you know, learning new skills. And it, so it's the exact same on the mental side of it. So for example, like, and I have worked with, um, you know, children in the past on the mental side of it, teaching mental skills at a very simple level for say sport and that. Um, but it's the same. So you start simple and then you build up the, the kind of complexity of what you're doing. So same with, for example, Johnny Sexton, he's gonna have been working on the mindset mental side of his game for years and years and years. And he's, he would practice under pressure as well. So um, I think you'll find that in a lot of uh, sports people that say, especially people that have a role in sports where the pressure is on them as an individual. So in a team sport, you know, for a, a number 10 in rugby, if you're kicking the whole stadium, all the pressure is on you. So, um, you know, typically in those positions, people will actually train under pressure in order to try and recreate the pressure of being in a in a match situation championship match and so for example uh, I think Johnny Wilkinson talks about this in his book as well that you know they would give themselves a target of like getting say 200 kicks on target in a row and starting again if they miss it at the end of training so when they're fatigued and you know so in that way they're building up their mental resilience under fatigue so you can literally systematically train for this um, and I think it's important for traders starting out like there is an element of you need some technical tactical skills in place for the mental side of things at the level we're speaking about it to really uh, be of benefit and to kick in so at the start, I'd always say to people, like when I'm working one to one with people in terms of uh, trading coaching, I would say they need to be at a certain level of technical skill in order to benefit. Because if you if you only have a certain amount of time to spend on trading during the week, you know, get the technical skills to a good level that's kind of relatively automatic, so that you know what you need to be doing, and then we can start looking at why do you deviate from that plan. So I think you know, it's taking that systematic approach and understanding that it's the exact same as building up your technical skills. You, you approach the mental side of it in the same way. I've just lost your audio there, Tim. Uh, fantastic. So, I mean, it's, I think a lot of people think that these wins are only attained by, you know, the, these gains are only attained by, um, you know, a small amount of practice and kind of very turnkey quick fixes. But, you know, the, as you're saying there, it's just methodical, consistent, you know, kicking 200, starting again, if you miss the 150th kick, you know, and, and I think with trading, I think a lot of people think that, well, if they just put on a series of indicators and have one or two good trades that then, okay, they're done, you know, but, but, I think yeah, something that I want to get out to people watching this is that, um, you know, even with the most technically proficient traders I've worked with and trader beside, um, you know, it, it, they, they don't just get there because they have a magic set of indicators It's because they have a really strong consistency to doing the right things, practicing those right things and just making it like a reflex action. And that takes a lot of like repetition. Um, and it, it's not something that, you know, they're, they're just doing for like four hours uh, once a week and, and it's done. And that might be a shocker to a lot of new traders who just, you know, think, well, I'm just going to put some risk on and I'll be driving a Ferrari by the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's more, the best traders I've worked with have, have years of, of consistency, well, well, years of practice, and they start on small size edge, and then there is a pivot point where they just go on to really big size, um, because essentially P and L is just a product of size. So if someone has 100% or 99% consistency uh, trading micros, um, they could very easily just turn turn the risk up like a thousand percent. And they're just going to be making a lot more money but it, unless you develop that consistency on the micros you're, you're really you, uh, you can't move on to bigger like putting more money into your account and trading that because essentially you're, you're kind of just lying to yourself um, and you're kind of winging it and gambling um, yeah. Um, but yeah brilliant stuff so um you know i started off this series with that quote from phil helmuth um, something about you know uh, good luck is having a 
uh, 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 being dealt a good set of cards, but skills knowing how and when to bet. And I, I, I pulled a stat on that in a masterclass session that I did um, a couple of months ago. And I polled everybody on how long or how many hands they think that Phil Helmuth uses or plays in any tournament. And everyone was surprised to realize that the average was only 12% uh, of the hands that he's dealt, he plays. And so, you know, coming back to my holy grail, which is trading is waiting, you know, working is waiting. Um, how do you think people can, uh, you know, restrain themselves in a way from taking what seems to be like opportunity after opportunity, and, you know, and then they get themselves into trouble uh, PL wise, but what are some of the tools really that you've seen uh, with your work with high performance people where, where maybe being too aggressive or being too active or too eager can be damaging? So that's a really good topic to talk about because it comes up for so many people. Um, the first layer of that is exactly like you've touched on in the other videos about understanding that trading is a different you know, it's a different mindset. It's a shift in thinking that will help you to develop that patience. So um, I was thinking this when I was watching your other videos that trading is probably one of the only professions where, you know, you can have a little bit of training and just go in and operate at the same level as people that have been operating in the market for years, you know. So if you think of what it takes for, I don't know, a barrister to get qualified and then go and actually uh, be responsible for the outcome of people's lives in court or a surgeon or whatever it it takes a long time before they're actually exposed to the the real world consequences of what they're doing whereas with traders you can just you know you could read a book and then enter the market so i think it's really important to give the right amount of respect to this performance domain and understand that whatever level you know you're starting out at that just because you have access to the the risk that you could potentially put on doesn't mean that you should you know go in and take full advantage of it that you really do need a measured approach and you need to understand it's a process same with athletes that start off you know some athletes would come in kind of say around academy level and rugby you know 18 and they've always been at the top of their game in school and they're used to being really good and they're naturally talented but you really see the difference then between the people who are willing to put in the the work and the discipline and the patience, they eventually outperform the people that had natural talent, but kind of just assume that they can get by on that. So in terms of going back to your um, idea of, say, people being overactive in the market and, you know, eager to get involved and kind of wanting to take every opportunity, there's different reasons why people do that. So sometimes it can be a mindset, like a personality trait of being someone who's quite impulsive, who gets a buzz from just being active in the market. And um, there's a really good book, people might have heard about it, uh, The Chimp Paradox by Steve Peters. And he talks about, uh, he's a sports psychologist, he talks about this idea of everybody having an inner chimp that's basically just really impulsive and you know just wants to get involved, wants to be excited. And so becoming aware of that propensity in yourself and kind of disrupting that automatic um, process where you're just following brain chemistry. So you basically your brain gets rewarded if you jump into the market and you put on high risk, regardless of the outcome, the actual act of doing that can make you feel good um, by releasing like dopamine in your brain. So to be conscious of that is really important for people who are naturally kind of risk takers would have that tendency towards a gambling mindset. That's one piece of it is to just identify, are you someone that that kind of plays out in, you know, for you and your brain chemistry and your personality and to become quite conscious about trying to disrupt that pattern. So when that chimp starts, you know, going for the button that you actually kind of pause and reflect and say, is this aligned with my trading plan or is this just me wanting to get a short term buzz from the act of being in the market? So that's one piece of it. And then another piece that comes up a lot for people as like a root reason why people tend to be overactive. Um, it's often when their ego is quite tied up. So I mean this from a psychology perspective, no, no judgment on this, but when people are trading for ego reasons, so um, either to protect their self-esteem, so to feel good about themselves, you know, to, to make more money, but in a way that it's to, um, to, to build up their self-esteem, basically. That is kind of a danger zone for you because if you're, if it means that if you lose or if you miss an opportunity or if you you know 
if you don't come out with massive profit, that it says something about you as a person. And um, that's when you're in a danger zone as well. So when your trading is tied up with your self-esteem, you're much more likely to take impulsive action in the markets or, uh, you know, to kind of take a loss really badly and go after it to try and make up for it. So I think there are a few key things to look out for in that space, but obviously it's quite individual. So there can be very different reasons why people do it, but it's a common challenge that people face. For, for me, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the way I've looked at that is like, I read The Inner Game of Tennis by uh, Timothy Galloway and, and obviously the work we did as well. Um, and I think, I think The Inner Game of Tennis was a book that helped me categorize, you know, I remember, remember we, we did lots of sessions where we almost had a new name for the monkey uh, in my head uh, nearly every different session. And, uh, but something I remember from that was actually, it was to be, not make it as such a negative thing. And then segueing into the inner game of tennis, it was to say, listen, there are kind of two parts of you. There's your ego and then there's, there's, there's your kind of uh, self uh, too, which is like the instinctual uh, sort of um, fluid flow thought, flow process, flow state sort of person. Uh, but your ego is always trying to like hold that flow state back and so I, I just once I kind of was able to categorize that from you and I working on it um, I, it that just opened up a whole new world for me in terms of my psychology how I think about doing my job and uh, and being able to sort of siphon off all the negative sort of uh, persona ego stuff that actually just always wants to be you know killing it and you know slamming these markets every single day and, and it's just that's given me so much um, clarity actually being able to detach these things and kind of categorize this and this is not a good thought process this is more instinctual and it feels right because it looks right and it is a good trade um, so take it you know and yeah, that's been fantastic. Um, so I know we're, we're getting on a little bit here, but um, I wanted to kind of close off with uh, one question. Well, there's actually two, but it's kind of, they're interrelated. Um, but it's, it's sort of like one statement I made in the first video was, and I, I get this from very early stage traders, um, is, you know, who have done a lot of blood, sweat and tears trading. Um, and they, you know, maybe they've had a couple of winners and now they want to get into full-time futures trading or stock trading. Um, and it's, it's, it's this, is that they say, wow, the more I actually know about how these markets move and the more I know about uh, macroeconomics or whatever, it's, it's just, it, it's, it, it's so hard to make money. Whereas before I was just like flow state, just, no, oh, this looks like a good trade and they were kind of essentially flipping coins but now it's a game of not just flipping a coin um but also then that could, the other part of this question is um when there's lots of information and it's tied together when there is lots of information how is it how how can we work on categorizing all of this so it doesn't stifle our our ability to do the job of being trader such an interesting uh, point. And I think some of that is about acceptance that that is part of the learning process. So there's one thing about starting off and maybe maybe you are making money because you don't know what you don't know. And you know, so maybe the, you're not overanalyzing or whatever, but that can only take you so far. So it's, I, I remember the first poker game, I'm not good at poker, but the first game I played, I was playing against, I think 10 guys and I'd literally never played in my life. And I got down to me and one other guy and it was purely because I didn't know what I was doing and I was just you know so but that would not have been a strategy that would have carried me through many other poker games so it's the same idea that in this process if this is going to be a career if this is going to be you know where you have long-term targets that you want to hit you have to accept that there is a period of time where you're going to be hit with loads of information and it's going to take time to consolidate it and you will get there and um, and it's about finding your own like you talked about this in other videos kind of finding your own edge finding you know not paying attention to every single indicator but actually figuring out what works for you and that's a process in itself so if you think about learning to drive a car you know at the start of it 
you're trying to process all these different things like the gears you're trying not to hit the old lady on the street you're you know can't drive the music on because it's too confusing when you're thinking of everything else and then eventually it becomes really automatic and solid and you can do it without thinking nearly and then you can get into a flow state so it's the same idea that actually just being patient with that process and understanding that as you level up so as you're improving your trading skills you're going to open up to more information but that's part of the process if you think of any other realm where you want to become an expert you, you know you can't stay in a comfort zone of just having a little bit of information and sort of hoping that that will carry you through you have to open up to taking in more and um, and then working to consolidate that and just being patient with that process but be aware as well that under pressure even for people who have already consolidated that pressure can make you actually go back into that uh, state of breaking down all the information and second guessing yourself so like paralysis by analysis so if as you're on that journey of kind of trying to consolidate the information and make it automatic if you can also manage your how you deal with pressure it will buffer against uh, starting to get confused or kind of overthinking all of the information at your disposal so there's a few different ways to do it so i'd say boiling that down one is being patient with the process and two and accepting that it's part of the journey um especially if you're thinking about it as a long-term career and then two is be mindful of actually dealing with the effects of pressure and anxiety on your thinking so what would you what, what would be like maybe your top one or two pieces of advice for traders who are just finding it really hard psychologically to, to you know, they're, they're learning a lot at the moment. They're reading all the books, um, you know, but there, there may be, uh, there's one trader actually I, who was, I was messaging with on Friday, who's, um, I think he's in the market three to six months. And he was sending me these videos of his trading and he's like, I can't believe what I've done here. We've we've uh, broken up through this resistance area, and I have I've had this trade plan for the last uh, forty eight hours. That if we broke up through this and made a pullback, I'll trade this and I'll go long. And, he, and then he was explaining this. He was like, "But that's not what I did. The market broke up, pulled back once, twice, three times, and I I I, I was shorting it every time." And he's just saying, I don't know what I'm doing to myself. What, like, what am I doing? It's like, there's one person is analyzing, the other person is trading. So to kind of come back here, it's like, I suppose, what, what would be kind of your top one or two pieces of advice for, for traders who are just probably amazed at how they have great plans, but they're not executing these great plans? So a couple of different, I'll get, I'll get three if that's okay. Sorry, right. I know we're going over time. But uh, First one, just uh, to your point about how do you, when everything's kind of, you're learning all this information and all of that, I would say set realistic goals, set, you know, small achievable goals, um, daily, weekly, monthly, uh, you know, so you can, if you're learning all that information and then you have the goal, like say your five-year goal is to be earning whatever from trading, but you're expecting that of yourself now, like then you're going to confuse yourself. Whereas if you keep it simple, simple goals. I think those, yeah, simple goals. And I think, really for traders that boils down to a p l figure like or or i think that's where it would really help you know yes have goals for learning a certain amount or uh proficiency goals for example but really with traders you know i think setting realistic targets is, is has such a power you know because you're sitting there thinking oh why haven't i made like 500 bucks today well stop designing a game that's really hard to play when you can design a smaller game that you can actually win every day by saying I'm trading micros I want to make 50 bucks every day and, and have consistency doing that or 100 quid so I mean yeah for, for goals for me that's a big one that I've been talking about the last two days in, in, the, in the trading room but absolutely and even to go a step further on that because sometimes actually so you should have PL goals um but then to work even backwards from that having more kind of performance based goals that are in your completely in your control can be helpful so for example our process based goals so aiming for consistency so maybe like rating yourself on how you well how well you stuck to your trading plan every day and making that the the emphasis 
at the start is well even actually for skilled traders but that's a kind of good focus to have it's completely within your control you know that if you do that over a long period of time you will get results so it even pulls you away from the pressure of the PL day to day and gives you a different focus and makes it quite straightforward so that's i think that's really important and then some other suggestions i think building self-awareness is fundamental to all of this so if people find that they're either over trading or they're afraid to put on risk it's i would say do that kind of performance profile exercise and uh understand what's behind your actions even if it's at a you know if it's not at the level of going deep into your psychology even if it's just understanding patterns in your behaviors that will give you the tools to be more conscious about choosing your actions that, that's actually a really practical exercise it's not like airy fairy concepts of psychology that don't really resonate with people it's actually a, an exercise that really has a practical and almost like a, a tangible um outcome so i i i'd, I'd be a big supporter of that yeah. I actually have a PDF on that I can um, send it to you, you can put it as a link uh, for people. So it just goes step by step to talk people through that because it, it really is the first place to start. And then the last one, although this would probably take a bit longer to explain, is t.duggan at amplifytrading.com. And we'll put a link to that uh, at the bottom of this video and we can send that out. Yeah, that's awesome. Brilliant. Brilliant. The last thing I would say is affirmations, which does sound hippy dippy to some people, but honestly, I've had the most logical thinkers, you know, who are um, who wouldn't normally deal with any of that stuff in their lives, use affirmations and have it literally overhaul everything, like transform everything for them. So there are statements that you say in the present tense about yourself that reinforce the mindset that you want to have when you record them and, you know, your own voice saying them, you play them every day. It, it sounds very out there but i honestly it is a way to shift a mindset so even if you're just trying to build confidence you could have an affirmation statement maybe it's in your you know you want to build confidence in your ability to stick to the plan so i stick to my trading plan every day um i have full confidence in my ability um i'm doing everything i can to become the trader i want to be those type of statements that was something interesting that uh, we worked on together and i, I actually <laughs> I, it was a bit jarring at the start and then and then I really got into it and it actually you know um, Annie Duke talks about this making a promise to your future self that keeps your you know the person you are right now sort of in check and, and responsible to something in the future right and I think the the, the scripts and performance scripts is just a, a task that you do with your clients I thought that was really good and uh, I thought it was interesting how I was asking you, hold on, do high performance individuals do this? And you were like, well, yeah, they, they, some of the, the roadie players you've worked with have these like these dialogues and these affirmations memorized and, and they might break it out in the middle of, of a pitch in a game. Thought, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And even that's interesting. It is jarring at the start because you're literally challenging deeply held beliefs so you're you're trying to as you try and change your mindset like that monkey or chimp or whatever is like really holding on to those old beliefs so it can be a bit uncomfortable and then but then it starts flowing and you see results and then you want to keep going with it so i think there are three tips anyway for people to take away that's amazing thank you so much that's that's really good really good chat um so how could we get hold of you or how would someone find you if they wanted to you know learn a little more yeah, uh, absolutely. So my website is creativeperformance.com. So maybe I'll send you just because my name is an awkward spelling and maybe we can drop that in the link below as well. Thank and you. I mostly am on, I'm on Instagram and LinkedIn professionally, but LinkedIn is probably where I'm more active. So if people want to contact me there, it's Creator Sheehy Kelly. Um, I think there's only one person with that name in the world. So uh, happy to chat to people. And if anyone has questions, you know, just reach out or my email as well is on my website. So you can email me either. Um, they're the best places to find me. Brilliant. Well, listen, thanks so much for, for a great session. And I think this has been a good way to round off a little videos on, on, on trading psychology. And, uh, you know, we might, we might bring some more uh, into this um, series down the line, but uh, for now, thanks so much and uh, look forward to talking to you too soon. Thanks Cheers. a lot. Cheers. See you.